In this episode of Texas Fishing Travels, I head down to South Texas to explore beautiful Baffin Bay and the surrounding area of Kingsville, Texas. Now, if you're an experienced angler, you already know that this area is legendary for speckled trout fishing, mainly because of the high salinity levels and the circular worm reefs that separate this bay in contrast to the other bay systems in this great state. Now, this is very debatable, but it's highly regarded as the place to target speckled trout that's greater or bigger than 25 inches. What's also very unique about this bay system is that the majority surrounding land is all privately owned by the King Ranch. I am taking a one day trip to get a small taste of the culture, food, and the fishing that this majestic place has to offer. I think the main reason why Baffin Bay has a high salinity level based from my research is that because you don't really have an inflow of fresh water, say you do like with other bays in all of Texas where you have streams, creeks, and bayous feeding into the bay. So therefore, you know, Baffin Bay is already shallow as it is with the high you know, temperature that Baffin Bay experiences throughout the year. With the sun being down, you have a lot of evaporation. And therefore, you leave in salt behind therefore diluting the water and making it very, very salty. Another cool fact that I found out about Baffin Bay when I was doing my research about it is that it actually consists of three bays along with Baffin Bay. So you have uh, Laguna Salada, you also have Alazan Bay and Cayo de Grillo. And if you translate those in English, Alazan Bay is green, Cayo de Grillo means purple, and Laguna Salada is blue. So it's pretty cool to come up with these nomenclatures and how they are developed throughout time and how much Spanish culture is really embedded into South Texas and Baffin Bay itself. After driving three and a half hours, I finally make it into Kingsville, Texas, where I meet up with another YouTuber that knows the Baffin system really well and whom I'm going to team up to make this episode of Texas Fishing Travels. Hey, man. Daniel? Nick, man, it's a pleasure yeah. to meet you. Welcome to Kingsville. <laughs> I know, man. It was a three and a half hour drive for me. Yeah. You live nearby, though, right? Yeah, I'm like 20 minutes out, 15 minutes. Okay, okay that's yeah. cool. Hey, guys, I want y'all to meet Daniel. He's a YouTuber I told you guys that we're, I'm collabing with. He yeah. invited me down here. We're going to hit up Baffin Bay. Yeah. But out of my fishing travels, usually you see me fish first then go to eat at a restaurant, like a local hole in the wall. But we're going to do it reverse. We're going to eat first game plan for tomorrow at this place right here tell me about this place man is this place for, is like a hole in wall right uh, it's only known for King, uh, there, there's there's a they make a, a roll that's really good here uh -huh. and, and uh, there's a place that used to be in Kingsville called uh, I forget the name of it but the guy used to work on the King Ranch and he'd make like a, a sourdough jalapeno cheese uh, wow bread. really so the hamburger bun they make here Okay. Is that? So is the cow the meat from King's King Ranch? Oh, I don't can, know. Can we assume that? I don't know if it's Sandra Gertrude's <laughs> cows or not. All right, man. I'm hungry. Let's go eat. Yeah. Yeah. So these rolls are what's famous here? Uh, like the the bread, like in the burger that yeah. they do. They do like a jalapeno cheese in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's this what is like a, a plain like but roll. I don't know. Looks like just plain old rolls of meat. <laughs> these are very good. A black and blue. Have you ever had one of those? black and blue you said it's pretty good so i should stick with the steak not a burger right burgers are good here too like they do uh you ever had an over easy egg on a burger yeah so they do That's that pretty good. they'll do that and then put with that bread i was talking about <laughs> yeah man this uh this burger looks pretty interesting i mean the prices ain't bad man but i wish the portion was bigger how's your steak pretty good all right, man, so what's the plan tomorrow? What are we doing, dude? Fuck. We're gonna have a, a north wind. Uh -huh. So we're gonna go to a little bit more protected area where the water is gonna be a little bit more clear. Okay. I'm expecting like a, you know, that gin colored water, kind nice. of sandy, yep. Yep. Um, muddy bottom. I go for mud bottom for trout. Okay. And, and rocks and grass nearby, deep water. So it's been. So what is your PB speckled trout? Uh, Thank you. 
32 and a half. 32 and a half. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. One day I'll be in the 30s, man. So Baffin Bay, from my understanding, my research, is known for like the big gator trouts. Yeah. Why is that so, man? What What do you think? Is the water salinity? The, the water, what, what the, the salinity is higher here. Yeah. We have the structure that's different than anywhere else on the coast. We okay. have the, okay. the worm reef that dates The worm reefs, to, yep, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, and then the closest pass closed in 1965 or six when Hurricane Balua, and there's a man-made pass called uh -huh. the Yarborough Pass. You got Port Aransas and then uh, Port Mansfield. So you got 60 miles in either direction. So the water's higher salinity. Yeah. And then whatever else nutrients are in the water. That That's how the speckled trout get big. Trout stay here. They just right. get big that reason. There's a little bit less fishing yeah. pressure in some of these places. Cause yeah. You get to drive 40, 30 minutes on a boat. To get 20, to that spot. Yeah. Some of the spots are real far. From man, I'm, to I'm super excited, man. My PB is 27 inches. All right, I got that from the jetties using live shrimp. So a lot of people will say, "Well, that doesn't really count," but to me, it counts. Okay. Oh, yeah. But the biggest trout I've ever gotten, like on a lure, which was a top water, is 26 and a half inches. Yeah. They almost beat it. Top. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to try to jinx myself or anything. I'm just looking forward to having a good time and showing the crowd the beauty of Baffin Bay yeah. and how unique it is compared yeah. to all the other bay systems in Texas. Yeah. So yeah, I'm. If I could catch a 30, that'd be that'd be icing on the cake. But yeah. you know, I'm not expecting it. I'm just there to have a good time. Yeah. But it's just cool to know that some of the you know state records is from Baffin Bay. Is that not right? Yeah, the previous four or five records are from Baffin, Baffin Bay. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that's that's encouraging, and that, that's why I wanted to team up with Daniel because he knows this area like the back of his hand. He's he's pretty much been here for many years, fished this area, hunts this area. This guy, you guys need to follow him on YouTube. I'll leave it all in the description box below, but we're gonna tear it up tomorrow, man. Yeah. I have a good feeling. Yeah. Now, what kind of Texas fish and travel episode would this be if I didn't stay at my local Walmart and I think I hit the jackpot. I think this is a superstore, so I think it's 24 hours. So number one, I have security, I have lights. Number two, number three, there's a there's a Walmart gas station right over there, which I think has bathrooms. So I'm I'm pretty lucky and I like to rough it out it seems, since it seems like you guys really enjoy that. So we're gonna be sleeping here in my back of my truck. I'm gonna wake up super early, meet up Daniel at the launch and we're gonna get our fishing on. So really excited. Right, ladies and gentlemen after a 40 minute boat ride we are finally at our spot it is a bit cold we got some cloudy conditions there might be some rain in the forecast however i am looking forward to just you know soak in all this bath and baby it is absolutely calm on this side of the shoreline it's beautiful lots of bait lots of birds yeah let's see if we can catch a big trout so like we're gonna wade out towards the south here yeah the rocks run kind of parallel with the shore. And tell me about these rocks. Just uh, some of the famous rocks out here. <laughs> Called the Badlands, this whole area. So there's a little micro spot okay. that I, I wade up to. And yeah. I go over there, it's called uh, Twin Palms that way. Opposite shore, yeah. it's called Starvation. And these rocks, are they dangerous? Oh yeah, you can ruin your boat. What about your waders? <laughs> uh, good pair of boots. Your waders, you, you'll be fine. Yeah, so uh, we agree catch photo release, no keeping fish. We want, if we catch a big one, we want them to grow and yeah. uh, lay the eggs and all that good stuff. So uh, all for sport, just a take in the beauty of Bath and Bang. We got a boater that just pulled up right over there. So maybe he has a good idea too, just like we do. All right, the ground is not too, too soft. It's soft, but it's not bad. It's like Matagorda. All right, I think we're gonna throw a soft plastic first. I'm gonna use the bugs, new trout thumper. Hopefully we can catch a nice fish on this. And we'll switch out if we need to. Oh yeah, the water is really clear. I mean, we don't have full daylight 
and I can see it's like two feet right here I can see the bottom clearly grass really beautiful I'm pretty excited man the yeah the bait there is plenty of bait and I am screwing up my first cast so what's the game plan here uh, Daniel we're just gonna be walking this grass line just kind of moving slowly casting letting we'll the bait do the, to the uh, where the rocks are up ahead yeah like I anchored the boat in like a muddy area yeah kind of cast over where the, the, the ledge of the rocks I feel a rock there we go <laughs> they are yeah that's pretty hard rock <laughs> that's this is the first time I've ever encountered those rocks man the famous what do you call it sepulchral worms am I saying that right Serpidulous worms I, I don't even know if I fit right oh I can feel my bait hitting it too yeah the rocks are all over here that's crazy yeah, that's no, uh that's what makes Baffin Bay so famous is these rocks right these reefs the natural reefs I've built over thousands and thousands of years. And the trout like to hang out with these rocks, huh? Yep. Sad wind. Did you find a rock? I did. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uni, uni. Oh, dude, I just got nailed. I got thumped pretty good. That was a nice thump. Man, I tell you what, man, it's crazy standing on these rocks. I mean, it is uh, probably about chest deep right over here, like maybe three feet to my right. But right here, I'm up to my belly button because I'm standing on rocks. It's crazy. I mean, uh, these, ro these rocks don't feel like like the rocks you feel like the jetty. They feel more, I mean, they, they're, they're hard, but at the same time, kind of brittle. Um, it's, it's a different feel. It's weird. As Daniel and I are fishing for about an hour, a minor cold front comes upon us causing the winds to pick up as well as a heavy dense fog to form around us. Now this was causing an impediment to our visibility and overall the weather just turns against us causing our fishing conditions to plummet. All right Daniel he's hooked up. It's been a little bit of a slow morning but the fog is starting to lift so it's very encouraging. We've been going through different types of lures and different colors to see what they want to hit but Daniel got the first fish so I'm pretty happy for him. Let's see if we can get one on the board. So we decide to head out to a different spot while we wait out for the front to pass us. There we go, we got one finally. You see you're working in like the wind. Yeah, and there's a bunch of rocks here. He's gonna be a keeper I think. Yeah, I believe so. First keeper today, beautiful trout. Oh yeah, he's a good keeper. Alright buddy. That's a respectable trout right there. About 17, 18. Yeah, all day long. Got some parasites on him too. He attacked my lure pretty hard. Let's get him out of here. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful Baffin Bay trout. Look at that. Keeper trout. 17 <laughs> inches all day. Thick boy. Yeah, I know. I tr As I'm walking on rocks, I'm trying not to get my lure to the bottom of the water column. Kind of trying to stay middle, middle-ish. And hopefully that's where um, we'll catch more fish. That's where I caught the first keeper, right in the middle of the water column. Another one. He's a smaller guy, but caught him right at the drop off. Like I'm on rocks and right maybe about 10 feet in front of me, it just drops off. Nice pretty fish. Another good example of a Baffin Bay trout that's going to get bigger. Because a lot of beautiful spots. There you go, my man. Yeah, I know. That's that's where I'm getting hit. It's like the drop off. Well, you said it got deep over there, right? There's a drop off. That's where I caught those two fish at. So that's why I'm just kind of targeting, right? Diagonal and letting it uh, middle of the water column. See that blow up right there? They're they're running along here. So you just kind of keep on casting, you'll run right into them, hopefully. Oh yeah. Got one? Sorry. Nice. It's a good one. It looks like a good one. <laughs> Got one on again. Nice. I just lost one. Yeah. He's, not, he's probably going to be right at 15 and a half. Which is actually a keeper up in the upper Texas coast. But if you guys didn't know, the Baffin Bay area, 17 to 23 is a new regulation. You have to catch uh, three is your limit. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, he's about 15 and a half. 
I'm pretty happy we're starting to get into the fish. Hey, this is a good one. He's a keeper. Got it on the fall. Yeah, he's a good one. Ah, he's not a keeper, I don't think. Not for the not for the lower Laguna Madre, my friend. For the Galveston area, yes. Oh yeah, he's a good he'd be a good keeper for me up in my hometown. Beautiful fish. Probably about 15 and a half. He's croaking really hard. Thank you, my friend. Get out of here. There we go. Got another one on. Got it right on the drop. So what's happening is right now I'm standing on a like a soft mud grass flat and it just kind of drops off into a channel and that's where these trout have been kind of lingering around and he just got off but that was probably about a good another 15 and a half 16 inches which is a keeper once again in uh in galveston but unfortunately here in the lower laguna madre where they had a a, a big effect from the you know what do you call it? winter storm i think it was called winter storm erie yuri i can't remember but it was in uh 2021 early 2021 and it just really messed up the texas coast especially down here in south and texas parks and wildlife thought it'd be a good idea to lower the limit from 10 5 now to 3 and it is 17 inches to 23 inches is the slot range where you can keep and take home <laughs> yeah the water temp has definitely changed it's warmer Probably like three, four degrees warmer than it was this morning. Oh yeah, I feel that sun. Oh, it's good to see you, son. It is good to see you. There we go. Just we got one. <laughs> nice. He got it on the drop. Once again, if this was Galveston, he is definitely a keeper, and we would have limited it out already. But we are not in Galveston, my friend. We're in Baffin Bay. Isn't that right, Daniel? Beautiful fish. Look at all these spots. Shows out how healthy they are. Thank you, my man. Reds. I've caught some nice trout. There we go. We got him. Oh, he's pulling a little bit of drag. He is pulling a little bit of drag, my friend. 20 inch. I just hooked him differently. <laughs> Man, I hate when that happens, right? When you uh, you think you got a big fish, and he is actually a pretty big fish. He's just foul hooked. Yeah, they, they pulled. Oh, sorry, my man. Got you in the gills there. Yeah, hey, that's a keeper. Yeah. That's a Baffin Bay keeper. I just foul hooked him, so we can't keep him by law, but still a beautiful fish. Thank you. Like I said, he was chasing that bait, and I got him. There he goes. Baffin Bay is so diverse, man. You got the, you got some deep parts. I mean, it's not too deep, but there are some deep parts. You got some mud, you got rocks, right? A acting as oyster reefs per se. Like, you know, that's the best thing I can compare it to like the upper Texas coast. You got grass flats, like we're on a grass flat yeah. or you can actually side cast. This would be a perfect time to side cast yeah. uh, if we wanted to. And then, um, man, it's, so redfish, speckled trout, you can catch flounder in these potholes. Baffin Bay is yeah. absolutely beautiful and the wildlife here um, we saw a bunch of birds uh, see King Ranch is right there so there can be Nilgai there can be exotics obviously cows right because King Ranch is known for cows this area is pretty cool man it's, yeah. it's very beautiful and then a lot of spots here too there's yeah there's black drum and if you're into that there's... fishing yeah more fishing I mean when they, when people come to Baffin Bay though it's about fishing right that's that's what they come here for um, because majority of the area that surrounds Baffin Bay and all the other small bays like Alzan, Coyote Grill, it's owned by King Ranch or it's, it's just owned, privately owned. So unfortunately you can't just hop off your boat and walk onto the land that's trespassing, <laughs> but you can take in the beauty of the bay system and enjoy the fishing because fishing is public. The water is public for us to enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time today, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. We caught some good fish. Uh, it was a little bit slow in the morning, but you know, with that fog, I mean, what can we do? That's, yeah. that's just fishing for you. Yeah. What do you say we get some lunch? Sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. To celebrate a great successful day on the water, I'm going to go out and pay for Daniel's meal because he did all the boat driving and we're going to go to a Indian restaurant. And I know I already can hear a lot of you coming there say, wait a minute, Indian restaurant in Kingsville. I thought you would go to like a, a Mexican restaurant or maybe a hamburger joint. But no, we're going to go to an Indian restaurant. It's called PlayStation. 
and he highly highly recommends it says it's one of the best hole in the wall restaurants in kingsville so let's see what's going on at playstation it's kind of sweet but like the yeah it's got a nice kick to it but I love spicy and I cannot handle it all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can only have like. Four. So, 65 is very spicy, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and the butter chicken. I okay. Really like. The butter chicken's always good. Butter chicken's good. Uh, the backbone there, the, the lamb and meatball is good. Yeah, it looks pretty good, man. And then they can do it over like lettuce for you, too, if you want a like lighter fare, you know, they'll put on. Yeah. I won't say this because I work here, I'll say this because I love the food, but like, there isn't a single thing on the menu that I wouldn't recommend. Like, it's all great. <laughs> yeah. You're a good salesman. <laughs> I think I'm going to do the chicken 65. That wasn't too spicy. Yeah, and right. um, <laughs> the butter chicken was good. So let's do the butter chicken. And then I'll actually do what he does. I'll put the green sauce on the rice. All right. And then can I get a, a extra side of the okra there? That okra looks pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And also the white, spicy, or both? Say that again? White rice, spicy rice, or both? Uh, white rice is fine. You know what's funny, Daniel, is when you told me the name of this place originally i thought you said playstation oh, no. spice <laughs> like sony playstation but i feel embarrassed when i saw the name is spice station <laughs> <laughs> i was close right that looks good right there and i'll get some um the naan also too please oh thank you my friend got the naan right there check this out guys authentic indian food in Kingsville. Uh, as I stated before, you'd think it'd be like authentic Mexican food, uh, authentic, um, what else, maybe pizza or something, but Indian food, come on. That's crazy, but I mean, it was pretty good, the samples they gave me, so let's try this out right here. And to be frank, I actually love Indian food because in Houston, there's tons of Indian restaurants and they're all pretty good. And this is pretty good for the price, not bad at all. So overall, that restaurant was off the chain. If I had to give a score from 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, I'd probably give it a 9. And honestly, if you ever do visit Kingsville and you want to fish Bath and Bay, highly recommend that joint, that Indian restaurant. Um, really good but anyways yeah I had a great time you know this trip was all about the people the experience uh, being able to take in the beauty of Bath and Bay because Bath and Bay as I stated earlier in the intro is one of those South Texas hidden gems that's um, that's very well known to anglers to produce some good speckled trout and granted yes we didn't catch the monsters but I was only there for one day and one night and you need to spend probably at least four or five days on the water to give yourself a chance to catch a monster speckled trout, which I 100%, I have no doubt in my mind that they are in that water because of the salinity levels, the rocks from the worms, just so much bait and it's just a great ecosystem. And I will be back. I have plans to, you know, hook up with Daniel once again, fish some more, get to explore more of the area. But yeah, this was a little bit of taste of what's upcoming. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I certainly, certainly enjoy myself on this Texas Fishing Travels because my mom once told me before she died uh, a year ago, she said, you know, never take anything for granted. Enjoy life while you can. There's so much beauty out there and Bath and Bay is one of those prime examples of what she was talking about. So I catch you guys on the next one.